This video is designed to help you start a garage business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a garage business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful garage business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Before anything else, you should create a business plan for your car repair shop that answers the following questions. The mechanic services you will offer, are you going to be a specialist shop, for example transmission, engine repair, or auto body repair, or offer general repair and maintenance, for example oil changes and multi-point inspections? Will you differentiate yourself by focusing on specific vehicle makes, or anything that runs on four wheels? Small business owners often have limited capital, and must consider the cost of specialty tools, and at least a diagnostic machine for the types of services they choose to offer. Many shops specialize in a single field before diversifying into other categories. Location Shop owners must consider several factors, when deciding where to open their auto mechanic shop, proximity to your target market, accessibility and visibility, for Walkins, the rent, etc. This is probably going to be the most important decision you'll make, so weigh all the pros and cons carefully. It's also important to decide whether you will have your own car repair shop or rent one out. Upfront costs, aspiring auto repair shop owners need $50,000 plus to start their garage business. Funding sources, how will you raise money? Will you dip into your savings to set up your garage? Is a bank loan an option? Tip, try negotiating credit terms or a higher purchase deal with a heavy duty equipment suppliers. Starting an auto repair shop requires capital. It's important to know the startup costs of a garage before you dive in headfirst. A lack of financial planning has seen many small businesses fail within the first few years since their establishment. Competitors, drive around or look them up online, while a little healthy competition never hurts anyone, you should definitely be aware of who your competitors are, and understand how they affect the potential of your own business. Having this information can give you an advantage in your garage business marketing too. It's easier to distinguish your shop if you know what you're up against. Target customers, this ties into the type of auto repair services you plan on offering. For example, independent shops looking to perform custom work on luxury cars, your target market will be very different from that of regular repair and maintenance work, on ordinary cars. Your car repair shop needs to have a defined audience, and a sound marketing strategy to attract new customers. Take as much time as needed to ensure your auto repair business plan is well thought out, and get feedback from anyone that will offer it. Mistakes made in the initial planning stages can result in unnecessary hurdles later. Remember that a business plan isn't set in stone, but acts as a guide to give you an estimate of where your mechanic's shop should be in a certain amount of time. It's also important that you're realistic about your total cost and revenue, so that nothing surprises you when starting your automotive business. It's also important to factor in your automotive repair shop insurance costs too, since this investment can protect your finances. Once you have a solid auto repair shop business plan, it's time for the next steps. Financing to start a garage business, you'll likely need a loan to help pay for equipment, location acquisition costs, employee salaries, insurance coverage, etc. Before providing a business owner with a bank loan or investing in a new business, the first question is always, will you be able to pay us back? A common source of financing among car repair shops in the U.S., Small Business Administration, SBA, loans. Lenders offer more flexible terms and better interest rates for SBA-backed loans, as they are insured by the federal government. If a borrower defaults on their loan, the SBA steps in and pays a guaranteed amount to the bank to help minimize the loss. Permits and Licenses You need a business license and certain permits, before opening a mechanic shop, businesses can be subjected to heavy fines, or even sealed, if these regulations are not followed. All this can be avoided if you pay the state fees to get the right licenses. For instance, since every automotive repair shop operates out of garages, a certificate of occupancy CO, is mandatory, as it proves that all legal and safety regulations have been met by the garage, and it is fit for customers to visit. Car repair shops must follow mandatory federal and state-level environmental regulations as well. Hire the right people. You'll need to hire the best mechanics and front office staff, to provide the best experience that encourages repeat business, from your existing customers. Finding the right employees should be a top priority for you, as auto repair technicians will influence how well your business performs. To remain profitable, it's important to provide solid customer service and deliver results, for which it might be a good idea to hire people with good work experience, and an attitude to learn and grow.
The next part of the video is not specific to a garage business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the garage business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful garage business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? 
you need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3, this is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a garage business, is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself. But don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free garage business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.